Good morning. It is a um, Tuesday morning, and I just want to talk about a few things. So let me first just go to the lesson plan. We um, decided against the Cabbage Lab because um, of the social distancing. So what we're going to do for Thursday and Friday is we are going to um, give you a, an article to read. So I just got this magazine called Kim Matters, and I have a subscription with them. And they give little articles in there that are actually very well written. So we give you an article to read, and um, either who, we'll just combine those two days. So if you want to do it all on Thursday, then you'll be free on Friday. Uh, now, on Tuesday, that's today, we're going to just talk about conceptual stuff. Uh, the test tomorrow is just simply 20 questions on a Google form. And we have a combination of conceptual multiple choice and calculation multiple choice. So I just want to talk to you about what that would look like today. Now, I know y'all have performed these titrations virtually, but what is a titration? So I included a couple pictures in here. And if you were in lab, this is what it would look like the setup. You would have your ring stand, you would have your Erlenmeyer flask, you would have your puree. And then in the Erlenmeyer flask, you'd have your acid. In the puree, you'd have your base but you would also put your phenolphthalein in the flask. Now, the phenolphthalein is clear in acidic conditions, but it turns pink in basic conditions. And you can see that in this picture, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's go back to what is the titration. Titration is a lab technique. And we are using it um, for acid and bases. You can use it for other reactions, but we're specifically using it for acids and bases. And so what you can do with this lab technique is you can actually figure out the concentration of an unknown solution. And so that's what you are doing with that technique. Now, in your written problems, we take it a, a little step further and look for leaders and some other things. But when you're doing the actual lab, you are looking for either an unknown concentration of this or this. Now, the virtual lab, we have you looking for the base every single time. But either way, it's a controlled addition of um, base or acid to another solution of the opposite nature. Okay, next slide. Now, in the lab, you performed three different titrations. So three different titrations for three different days. So you had a strong acid, strong base titration, a weak acid, strong base titration, and a polyprotic or a diprotic acid and a strong base. Now, remember the seven strong acids and we talked about in the last unit, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, nitric, chloric, perchloric, and sulfuric. Those are the seven strong acids. Now, the one that you specifically did in lab was hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. And then the weak acid you use, acetic acid and sodium hydroxide, and it produced that salt solution. And then the third titration that you did was with sulfuric acid. So you did three different types of titrations. All three dif different types give you a different endpoint, and they all three give you a different titration curve. All right, so when you were doing these titrations, how did you know when to stop? Well, both solutions are clear, and so you wouldn't know when to stop unless you had some sort of indicator to indicate 
hey, stop, stop. We've reached the end point or the equivalence point. Now, what indicator did y'all choose for all three labs? Phenyl thaline. And why did we choose it? Because it changes color when the solution turns a pH of about 8-ish. So it's a really good stopping point. How else would we know that we've reached the equivalence point? Well, we wouldn't. That's the point. Okay, so the next slide here. What are titration curves? Well, a lot of times titration curves can indicate um, what type of acid and base you're working with. So if I were to first look at these two, <clears throat> Which one is the strong acid and the strong base? And which one's the weak acid and the strong base? Well, you should have picked this one. How do I know? Well, there's that sharp increase there. So remember that's indicative of a strong acid, strong base is it goes literally from like two all the way up to 11. And I don't know if you remember when you made the titration curves, that all happened in like two milliliters of adding base. It was pretty sharp and instant and amazing all at the same time. All right, weak acid, strong base. Look how it's, um, well, first of all, if you have a weak acid in there, the starting pH is, is higher. Strong acid, the starting pH is lower. So you have a higher pH. <clears throat> And the increase isn't nearly as sharp. You have a, that increase, of course, but then it quickly levels off once all the acid is used up. Couldn't find a good curve online, so I figured I'd just draw one. Now, um, if you have a, you use the diprotic, so you, oops, my mouse got stuck could expect something like this. Oh, that was so beautiful. My OCD people are going to get a little anxiety over that right there, but that's okay. So you know it's diprotic because it goes boop, boop. So two increase points. Um, now that lab, virtual lab, I don't think the... <laughs> I don't think the titration curve actually showed you this, but that's why we added the research questions so that you could actually see what they look like. Virtual labs are great, and then they hit a point where they're just not amazing. But that was the best one out of all of the ones that we could find. So once again, you add your volume of base, and as you add the base, the pH changes, but it doesn't change linearly it changes according to this curve and each curve looks a little dif different and it's distinct and it indicates the type of titration that you had. Okay, this should look very familiar. Now it says, what do you do when the titration has reached its equivalence point? You stop. I don't really know why I typed this question. What do you do when the titration has reached its equivalence point? Well, you stop. Duh. It's pink. You stop. Um, let me just go back over a few things, actually, while I'm looking at this picture. Strong acid versus strong base is what we selected here. What are we going to fill our beret with? Base. So we chose hydrochloric sodium hydroxide phenolphthalein indicator. And then what did you do? You started with this slider button because you didn't want to push drops all day long to get the solution pink. So you slid that thing on up and then you realize if you got too far, you could just press this button and then you do it again until you, you go a little bit lower this time. And then until you think you got to the pink, the pink part, you click the concordant value again. The thing about this is you can't go back down, right? Once it's once it's come out of the solution, you've gone too far. So that's why you had to do it three times so you could figure out that point where you where you ought to stop with the slider button and then finish it off with the drop wise button because 
you want it to where one drop turns it pink. And then once you get that pink color, this is where you stop total volume of base. And then this is the liters of base that you use. This is the liters of acid that you use. This is the molarity of acid that you use in your calculation. Now on the test, be prepared. Um, you're going to have two different types of calculations. You're going to have your word problems that you were given yesterday, and you're going to have maybe two lab-based calculations where it's just going to look just like this. And we might pick a different acid and a different base. So you have to look at the picture. You have to know which one to pick <clears throat> and then use all these values to calculate. And that's it.